Okay, welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Frank McCallum at uh, Vista Virtual School up in Alberta, Canada. So to get us started, Frank, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, I've been involved with distance education in some form for the better part of 20 years. So I started off in uh, an outreach setting in Northern Alberta and was part of the first uh, video conference community of practice where we would deliver uh, synchronously between a number of small rural schools, some higher um, academic sciences and math where it was difficult to get uh, specialists in, uh, in all these different communities. And so that was my first sort of taste of distance education. And then about 12 years ago, I joined the Pemmon Hill School Division, which has two distinct and separate bodies. First is the Vista Virtual School, which is the, the online school that the uh, division runs. And I've also been involved with the Alberta Distance Learning Centre, which is a provincial provider funded separately through the Department of Education, but managed by the um, uh, Pemina Hill School Division to provide distance education service to schools across the province of Alberta. Okay, cool. So over the last couple of decades, you've been involved in a variety of mediums in terms of distance delivery. And we've got teachers not just across the province of Alberta, but across Canada and really North America right now, and many other jurisdictions that are scrambling to try to figure out how to go about doing this, most whom have no training in the area and no real experience in the area. Uh, what's a couple of the pieces of advice you'd give them? Well, probably not the most optimistic thing, but when I think back to when I first started into video conferencing, which is for me the first sort of online delivery that I did, uh, it was synchronous. But uh, my first piece of advice is that the prep time was enormous. For me to prep for an 80 minute class took on average two to two and a half hours. So I would say don't shortchange yourself on the prep time because what you're doing is you're trying to anticipate more so than in a traditional classroom what some of the barriers or what some of the questions might be so that you can have resources and materials uh, prepared to address those concerns. In a bricks and mortar setting, it's very, or what I found, easier to respond on the fly to questions. You know, because you had a, a whiteboard or a blackboard, uh, depending on your particular age, um, you could always uh, come up with diagrams or with uh, solutions to unique or sudden problems. And I didn't have that ability in delivering synchronously online. I kind of had to think, where are the common stumbling blocks here and how do I prepare some strategies to address those? The other part I would say was really important was what I now know is curating online resources. So you typically don't have to reinvent a lot of wheels. There's tons of material out there. Some of it's commercial, that's a little more difficult to get a hold of and you know, you're paying for it. But there's also a lot of open uh, resources online that uh, you can make use of in an online setting, but they're not always aligned to curriculum or they're not always doing exactly what you wanna do. So you end up spending a lot of time um, beyond the prep just curating or going through and looking for what's out there and picking out those little bits and pieces that you think can be helpful for your particular students. Now in Alberta, we do have the benefit of, of a provincial provider that does prepare materials that are aligned to Alberta curriculum, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily gonna use them whole hog. I mean, you still might wanna be going through there and determining, well, I wanna use this interactive or this video. So curation is a, is a really big part of the, the online teacher's world. Okay. Now, parents always have a role to play in the partnership between the, the student and the classroom, but with students at home now, that becomes a much bigger role and a role that they haven't been accustomed to in the past. So do you have any advice for those folks? Well, the first thing, and I guess this applies to teachers as well, is, is not to be afraid of something new. I mean, everyone is trying to learn this and we're learning it together. So. Um, no one is expecting or no teacher is expecting a parent to suddenly become an expert in physics or chemistry or social studies or mathematics. So don't feel that, uh, that the parent has to become the subject expert. That's why there's a teacher. But the two things that uh, we've noticed time and time again is to maintain a, a steady schedule for their students or for their kids. So 
even though we're not in a, a bell system in a school, you still want to have some sort of a regular routine where the student will still be starting this particular course at this particular time or be doing their homework between this time and this time because there's still homework in, a, in an online delivery. And so maintaining that, that level of routine is really helpful. Um, for a lot of situations now where the schools are um, suddenly doing emergency delivery through online, some of that routine will be set by whatever schedule the school or the teacher is set, but the, the parent can make sure that the student is still doing their homework on time, that they're still carving out the time necessary to do each subject to deal with each subject. So I think that's probably the biggest one. And the other one is um, communication. I mean, relationships are still vital, even in online delivery. And that sometimes surprises people. Um, in our school, we find we have relationships that are as close or sometimes even closer than we were in a bricks and mortar setting. So constant communication and contact between teachers and students, teachers and parents, I mean, that's all very helpful and it helps allay a lot of those fears that some people have in going into this kind of new delivery. So again, um, maintaining schedule or routine with their kids and maintaining contact and communication with teachers. Those to me are the biggest things that a, that a parent could do. All right. Thank you very much, Frank. This has been another episode of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning today with Frank McCallum.